Hello team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss some questions of CISSP domain 4. I'm going to cover around 6 questions which is mapped with some protocol and attacks. With this video, you will get a visibility about those topics. If you're new to my channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. And if you really want to know more about my coffee shots or CISSP, CCSP, then you can visit my website prabnair.in to get the inventory of all the coffee doses. So my name is Prab Nair. For more information, you can refer my LinkedIn profile. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Okay, so first question is, which type of routing protocol handle routing between the routers within an enterprise? It means they're talking about the routing within the enterprise. So we have a four protocols here. Option A, IGP, Interior Gateway Protocol. Option B, Exterior Gateway Protocol. PGP, there is nothing called as a PGP. We have a pretty good privacy, which is used for email security. And then we have a Border Gateway Protocol. Question specifically talking about routing between the routers within an enterprise, within the organization. Not between two, but within the organization. So when I say IGP, IGP handle routing within the autonomous system. Okay, we call it as a autonomous system, which is basically happening within the enterprise. In other words, IGP, you can say they route traffic between the routers within the enterprise where the EGP basically control the routing outside an autom autonomous system. So we have an autonomous system one which is called enterprise one and enterprise two. So EGP is basically used to communicate between the two autonomous system. So BGP is removed default. BGP is part of IGP. Question talking about router within the enterprise. So very close option we have is A interior gateway protocol because IGP is a protocol that is used within the enterprise. So let's move to the next coffee shot. Okay, so which type of routing protocol handle route traffic between two separate organization? Now they don't talking about within, they're talking about two separate organization. Option A, IGP, as we discussed in the previous topic, IGP is basically used within the enterprise. BGP, which is a, a EGP protocol, border gateway protocol, which is used within the between the two enterprise. PGP is a pretty good privacy. RIP, which is called root information protocol, which is used within the enterprise. So the close option is basically called as a BGP. So BGP is the one which is a EGP protocol, exterior gateway routing protocol, by which uh, routing can be communicated between the two different enterprise. Okay, let's move to the next coffee shot. Okay, an organization shift their business model to keep up the uh, keep up with the technologically evolving world. The network continue to grow more complex with the influx of new device. With employee working remotely from personal computer or accessing the corporate network from personal phone, some solutions must also able to handle the permissions and authentication of unfamiliar device attempting to access the network. Which solution will you recommend to manage these devices? It means the question talking about things are getting increased, they are growing, they have a different type of device who wish to access the enterprise from the multiple locations. And now they want to manage those solutions, they want to manage those devices. So what solution we use? So directly if I go for DHCP, DHCP is all about assigning the IP, which has no connect with the question. Question talking about some unrecognized device which to part of the enterprise network, so they need to go through a proper authentication authorization. Firewall just used to filter the network traffic, so C and D removed. There is nothing called as a network access discovery. So only option is basically left is NAC. NAC is basically like a posture management. Any device who wish to connect with the enterprise network Okay, suppose this is the device which carrying a request to be part of an enterprise network. There is a solution we called as a NAC or NAP. That solution is basically going to scan the device against their approved baseline. That antivirus must be there, baseline should be there, configuration should be there. If that device basically meet the configuration baseline, if the device is basically meeting the requirement, then they will basically issue the DHCP to assign the IP 
and by which they can able to access the corporate network. Otherwise, that system will be part of the restricted network. We install all the necessary configuration to comply with the company enterprise policies. So NAC basically ensure only authorized device to be part of the network. It is same like, you know, you resume back office. Okay, but there is a criteria they have defined that, okay, you must have a vaccinations and all that. So until unless you don't carry the vaccination certificate, which is a minimum requirement, you can't join the office. Same like NAC basically ensure your system should be configured with some basic configuration. Like antivirus should be there, system should be updated. They should be part of an approved list. If they meet all the requirement by this way, they get IP and they can able to access the internal network. So NAC is basically used to differentiate between the authorized device and unauthorized device. So NAP and NAC is the same thing. That's why the answer is A, A for alpha. Let's move to the next coffee shot. In which kind of attack, so next coffee shot, in which kind of attack does attacker submit a lot of connection request extremely quickly, but then ignore the reply that is delivered back to them by the server. It means whatever the server reply, they ignore that. So if you go by sinful attack, in sinful attack, this is happen actually, because if you see, this is the attacker machine. Okay, so he used some random IP, suppose 1.1.1.1, which is not even exist in the network. And this is basically my web server. So attacker basically send the sin request in which he used the source IP, which is not even exist in the network. Destination IP was the IP of the web server. So web server IP is 1.1.1.2. So source IP was 1.1.1 and destination IP was 1.1.2. So he sent the SYN request. So definitely if the port is open, he will reply back SYNAC. So he replies SYNAC. Meantime, web server basically keep the SYN packet in a queue. He will keep the packet in his memory for a 70 second maximum. If in the 70 second, he doesn't get the reply of his sin, he will remove that pack packet from the memory. But attacker uses opportunity and send the multiple sin requests on the same time. And by this way, he will flood the memory with the fake sin request. Now, if any legitimate user, example like we have a legitimate user who wish to access the website, he send the sin request, so web server will reject the connection because already memory is fill, filled with the fakes in request. And then this question, they're talking about same thing. Attackers submit lot of connection requests extremely quickly, but then ignore the reply that is delivered back to them by the server. So here the server reply back SYNAC, but the IP is not even exist. So when IP is not exist, they will not reply back. So that basically delay the connection request. So it here, we exceed the connection limit by sending and pushing more and more SYN packet into the memory. So that is lead to the SYN flood attack. Now, what is happen in the smurf attack? In the smurf attack, we have attacker. And this is basically my target. So this time what happened? Attacker basically spoof target IP. And send the request to 2000 host. So it means the source IP was the IP of the broadcast IP. 255.255. 255.254 example. So this is the source IP and destination IP. Sorry, source IP is basically the IP of target IP, which is called as a 1.1.1.1. 1.1.1.1. And the destination he mentioned the 2000 IPs. So when this 2000 IP basically receive the request, which is coming from 1.1, they reply back to the 1.1. So target is receiving the multiple ICMP echo packet back. So that is basically called as a smurf attack where the attacker spoof the target IP and send the request to 2000 host and 2000 host reply back to the target. But in the question, they're not talking about that. Ping of death, we're sending a larger ping packet to the destination, which is at later stage unable to handle. And same thing happened in the ICMP flood attack. So this question is more aligned with the option A, which is called as a sinflur attack, which is happening at the layer four of the OSI model. Let's move to the next coffee shot. Okay. The question talking about an ICMP packet is sent to the broadcast address of a network. However, the return address of the packet has been modified to corresponding with one of the machine that are part of the network. Which type of attack we are addressing? The same thing. See, we have an attacker and this is my system B. 
and he basically send the broadcast request see send the broadcast address so this broadcast address okay reply back to the b because it's mentioned broadcast address of the network however return address of the packet has been modified to corresponding with the one machine that are part of the network so b machine is a part of a network also so source ip was the ip of b a added and destination he basically added the broadcast ip so this broadcast ip replied to the b okay in sinflare attack one system directly sending the sin packet to the destination by spoofing the random source ip so sinflare attack is removed ping of death uh, ping of death attack where we sending directly a ping packet to the b in icmp flood also we doing the same thing so this is basically more close to the smurf attack in smurf attack we basically spoof one of the machine ip and send the icmp echo request to 1000 host and those 1000 host reply to that ip only it is same like i took the name of my friend akash hey akash asking this money and based on the akash name i collected the money from 1500 people now 1500 people go back and ask akash for that money actually another name of the smurf attack we also have which is called as a fraggle attack fraggle attack this is also happening on the layer 4 the only difference is that in smurf attack we send the icmp echo packet but in fraggle attack we sending a directly udp packet on the destination port number is 7 happening at the layer 4 so this is all in this video in this kind of videos i have started an initiative of only 10 minutes of video so do let me know if you like this short version of coffee shots and do let me know do do i make more videos on a similar topic and uh, do let me know what are the other attacks you know in the layer 3 and layer 4 in the comment box okay thank you for watching my video and if you still not subscribe to my channel do subscribe to my youtube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic thank you goodbye